there are 10 ways that the devil attacks you to try to throw you off your walk as a Christian. And today I'm going to offer you guys 10 solutions to also fight back from those attacks. So um, my name is Marcus. Welcome back to another video, guys. Um, this channel is to glorify God's name. And before we jump into the video, I would ask that you guys subscribe. And if you receive value from the video, like it before you go. So today we're going to just jump into these 10 topics I want to share with you guys. And um, raise your awareness. The devil hates us and does not want us to succeed in our walk with Christ. So the first one, the, the first way the devil attacks us is doubt. He wants you to doubt that God is who he says he is. He wants you to doubt your salvation. He wants you to uh, question whether you are truly saved or whether you're truly going to heaven or whether truly heaven even exists. Um, and so a solution for that is to um, be in the word of God. Understand what the Bible says. No Bible verses about what the Bible says uh, God is who he says he is. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you're not reading your Bible, I promise you, you're not going to have sound faith because you're not going to know um, what the Bible says about God being who he says he is. So with that, you got to just stay steadfast. Um, grow um, in your faith by reading the word. I promise you it works. Uh, number two, the way the, the devil attacks Christians is fear. Fear does not come from God. There's a reverence and a fear of God. But fear, like in a scary way that like leaves you in a, in a negative state, that's not from that's not from God. That's from the devil. Um, he wants to cripple you. He wants you to not um, advance the kingdom of God. And so he's going to try to scare you from your assignment. He's going to try to to make you think that um, there are things that the world is against you. And to replace that fear, the solution would be uh, just read the word of God. Have Bible verses that combat that fear. Um, there's one, Second Timothy verse uh, or chapter one verse seven. For God has not given us a spirit, a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. So the Bible tells you clearly that God does not give you a spirit of fear. Spirit of fear is from the devil. Uh, so when the devil is trying to talk to you or scare you with something, realize that the devil is a liar. He's a perverter of the truth. So literally what he does is he takes God's word and he flips it in reverse. So if he's saying something to you, reverse it. And the truth is what God's word says about you. The third way the devil attacks Christians is busyness. I can relate to this all too well. Uh, in my job before, um, probably about before September, um, I was very busy all the time. Work, 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 16 hour work days and I was starting to get convicted by the Holy Spirit that I wasn't spending enough time with God. I wasn't digging into my relationship or taking my walk as serious as I should be because I was idolizing my job and idolizing money. And um, I, you can't do that. You know, so uh, we often find ourselves busying ourselves or staying busy to to avoid confrontation from God by something that we're doing that we shouldn't be doing. Or we just don't want to give up certain things that we like. Um, we just want to be comfortable and sometimes even lazy. And so the devil uses that as a way to um, keep you from strengthening your bond with God. And um, it's just a way for the devil to catch you slipping, right? Hungry, angry, lonely, tired, halt. They taught me this in, in uh, recovery, uh, that those are the ways that you fall back into either some type of sin in this case, they were talking about falling back into drug addiction. And when you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, these are times that you're weak and you're empty and you're looking for something to fill you back up. And chances are you're going to reach to sin for this to fill you back up. But take heart. The, the, the devil has been defeated by Jesus, guys. So the solution to this is to just lean on God. Um, when it comes down to... Um, when it comes down to fighting the devil, the best thing you could do is read your Bible and pray to God. Jesus would sneak off and pray and have time in the holy place with, with God alone. And if Jesus could sneak off and pray and spend time with God, then I think that it's good enough for us to do too. So um, instead of being so busy all the time, carve out time where you prioritize being alone with God, being in the word of God, no distractions, no phone, no notifications, no um, anything that's going to take your focus away from 
the Lord your God in that time that you have to build your strength with him. Um, uh, the fourth way the devil attacks Christians is isolation. Um, when you feel alone or when you feel like you don't have anybody that understands you or you don't have any friends or you don't have a partner, um, you can definitely feel abandoned and alone. And that leads you to um, that leads you to being vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. So what do you have to know? How do you fight this? Well, you get into a church, a Bible believing church that has good people that will reach out to you, help you get along on your walk with Christ. Uh, join a small group, join a life group. Um, find people that are further along in, in their walk than what you are and get around those people, make them your friends, uh, and imitate them. Don't mock them, but imitate them. Right. Um, there's a saying, I don't remember where it came from, but you are the sum of the five people you hang around with most. So if you hang around four Bible believing men of God, Chances are you're going to end up having some of those qualities the longer you hang around them, guys. But if you hang around five thugs and gangsters in the street that sell drugs and do crime, chances are you're going to start to do to do those things. And that's what my past was. I hung around all street people. So I did street things. Now, I don't instead of having drug dealers numbers in my phone. I have pastors numbers in my phone. I have cops numbers in my phone. I have bankers numbers in my phone. All these people of uh, esteem and, and good character and morals and values. These are the people I surround myself with these days. So the urge to go back and do something illegal or do something stupid in the streets is totally gone. And um, that was the solution for me. So number five, we're halfway through guys. And if you guys are getting value, please hit the like button. I definitely would greatly appreciate it. Uh, number five is pride. I think everyone whether you're a Christian or not, struggles with pride. Um, some people don't know that they shouldn't be prideful. Although Proverbs uh, 16, 18, the Bible verse, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall is pretty much known by everybody. Um, I think that the world still is in this, especially nowadays, this state of self-worship, uh, being selfish, uh, making themselves their God. I hear far too often um young black men, especially calling themselves gods. You're not a God. Uh, there's only one God. There's only one way to heaven and that's through Jesus. So for people to be out here, I'm a God, I'm a God, you know, you're, you're really not. The devil is fooling you. He's rocking you to sleep. And so uh, when you think that you're the one that's in control of your life and you've made all these great things happen in your life, you're sadly mistaken and the devil's he's having victory over you. So um, don't become self-reliant. Lean on Jesus. Understand that all good things that you have come from God. The solution is that you lean on God. You trust on God. Um, you understand that nothing that you have that is good has come from anything that you've done. You are a part of it, but it all comes from God. You have to be obedient. You have to work for it because laziness isn't going to get rewarded. But you have to get out and like actually put your foot to the plow or put the plow to the field, so to speak, and um, actually do the work. And then God takes care of the rest. So don't be self-reliant and thinking that all your good things that you've had is because you're the man because it's not. Um, number six is going to be unforgiveness. I know that there's a lot of people that struggle with this. Unforgiveness is very, very tough, especially for people that have been done wrong and mistreated. And uh, there's all types of uh, hurt out there, church hurt. There's relationship hurt, uh, physical and mental and sp uh, spiritual abuse um, that people go through. But I promise you, the devil is using that that hurt in your life to have a stronghold on you to where you're just trapped in bitterness and uh anger and resentment and he's stealing your joy by that um so i encourage you to ask ask the lord to give you the strength to forgive the solution is to let go of it and give it to god and move on i've been done wrong by a lot of people in my life and i've done a lot of people wrong as well but i know that when i forgave those people and moved on past it and stopped like letting it hold a spot and i'm talking about they were renting a condo in my head guys and they just had a little spot there and they were all cozy and just you know made me miserable until i let go of it now i don't have to focus on those things anymore i don't have to have that anger or or bitterness anymore it, you know it, it's freeing when you can let god take control of that and, and get rid of that and be able to just move on and focus on things that bring god glory so uh number seven false doctrine guys this is this is a really big one because nowadays 
anybody can get on YouTube. Anybody can get on a platform and say things and become an authority in a space where they don't really know what they're talking about or they don't really um, have the best intentions at mind, right? There's a lot of false prophets, a lot of false preachers out there, a lot of false teachers. So you need to understand what the word of God says. Even with you watching this video, everything that I'm saying, run it through the Bible, test it against scripture um, <clears throat> and make sure that you're, you're understanding the word of God yourself in full um, context and that way you can discern against people that are telling you things that you shouldn't be understanding or listening to. Um, so with, um, with, especially with YouTube, there's so many Christian channels out there these days. And, uh, there's a lot of people that are trying to push their own agenda. So you have to understand word for word, what the Bible tells you, what the Bible says is true. Um, so, uh, Ephesians six fourteen encourages us to stand firm with the belt of truth tucked around our waist. And so if we don't understand what the Bible says to be true, then someone can come in with almost full biblical doctrine and change a sentence or two. And now the whole doctrine is false. And so you're believing something that you shouldn't be believing just because it sounds very close to biblical. So understand what the word says. And that way you won't, um, you won't get taken um you won't get taken by surprise uh number eight is discouragement the devil loves to discourage people he loves he wants to steal your joy uh he does not like you he does not love you i see these shirts um at like target and other places and it says satan loves me satan does not love you satan hates you he wants to kill you um there's no love in Satan. So the world is kind of lost right now. And they're like, oh, you know, Satan loves me. Satan loves pronouns. Satan does this. The devil hates you with all with every fiber of his being. He hates you. And uh, he wants you to feel abandoned. He wants you to turn your back from God so you can then hate God and, and hate, you know, everything and everyone and um, be totally miserable. Um, if you're discouraged, the chances are, you know, with you being joyless and joy, joyless and, and, and miserable, you're going to try to put that and project that onto someone else because misery loves company, right? But the solution to this would just be remind yourself what God says about you. You are a child of God. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. He knit you together in your mother's womb. He numbered the hairs on your head. He has a plan for you, a perfect plan, a perfect will for your life. And he loves you. He sent Jesus to die for your sins on the cross. And if you were the only one, he would still do that again. So it doesn't matter what the devil says about you. What matters is what the word of God says about you. Number nine is compromise. Compromise looks like um, you knowing what the Bible says to do, but you still do sin anyway, even in small or large amounts. Right. Um, you can be you can be in a relationship and sleeping with that person that's compromise you know you're not supposed to do that you could be um trying to walk in alignment with the word of god says and then someone's like hey uh don't read the bible today come hang out with me that's compromise you know and while it's not in a legalistic sense if you're not reading the bible one day next thing you know is going to be two if you're not reading the Bible two days, next thing you know, it's going to be three. Next thing you know, you're going to look up. You haven't read the Bible in a month. And I'm sure sin is going to be creeping in then. And then it's like, you know, when you let one little thing slide, you let another thing slide. So you don't read your Bible today. Tomorrow you don't pray. Next thing you know, you know, you're, you're feeling far away from God and you wonder why he isn't speaking in your life anymore. Well, that's because you haven't tapped in. You know, um, if you're not staying focused in your relationship with a person, uh, if you're not telling this person, you know, that you love them or communicating with them, you're going to start to distance yourself. And um, that's when things creep in into that relationship. Next thing you know, you're like looking at porn or either you're like talking to another woman on the side, you know, because you, that's compromise has come into the relationship. So set boundaries that are based on biblical principles. Um, Proverbs 4 uh, verses 26 through 27 says, give careful thought to the path for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. So in all your ways, make sure that you're honoring God and everything that you do, make sure it gives God glory and all that you do, make sure you do it as you're doing it unto the Lord. And then that way, nobody can come in and help, uh, you know, deter you or throw you off your, your walk. 
Um, and the last one, guys, that we're going to talk about is distraction. Distraction looks a lot of ways, um, but it's it's anything that's going to throw you off your focus or off your course. So you look straight ahead to the path, the path that God has set you apart for, the assignment that he's given you, right? <clears throat> and sometimes along that way, you can hit peaks and valleys just like with anything else in this life. And then you might start to wonder, well, is this what... Is this what God's got for me? Or, you know, it's taking me longer to get there than I thought it would. It wasn't an overnight success at it. Um, then you see someone else over here and the growth that they're having because they're they're on the same type of path that you're on or they're in the same type of field that you're in or their walk looks similar to yours in a lot of ways. You might get distracted at what's going on with someone else or how well someone else is doing or why you're not doing it as fast. And then with that distraction, you you get thrown off your your thoughts and focus of what God really set you apart for. The devil uses this to throw you off your off your square cuz if you're not truly focused on God, then he can he can, he doesn't care if you worship God a little bit. He doesn't care if you go to church every Sunday, you know, as long as he can throw you off your square one of those days of the week or two of those days of the week, then he does have you in bondage. He does have you with a stronghold. And so um, Colossians 3, 2 says to set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. So this is the solution. Focus on God. Focus on what the Bible says about you. Understand that God has given you a purpose. He has given you an assignment. Focus on that assignment. Don't get distracted by your progress against another person's progress because comparison is the thief of joy. And that's what the devil would love for you to do. Um, keep your eyes ahead. Keep your eyes on God. Um, understand that God's timing is not our timing. Things will happen the way that they're supposed to happen in the time that they're supposed to happen. And so those are 10 ways the devil attacks Christians and 10 solutions to combat the devil's advances. Hopefully this message helped you guys. Um, if you got value from it, leave it with a like. Consider subscribing to this channel, guys. Help me to reach 1K subs. The only way I'm going to get there is with you guys' support. Uh, in Christian content, it's a saturated stream. It's a saturated field with a lot of people in it um, that a lot of new creators are coming up left and right. So the only way this is going to be able to grow is with God blessing it and you guys liking and sharing and subscribing to the channel. So uh, that's going to do it for this one. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And until then, God bless everyone.